All night, couldn't get anything going. Then, Lamar forced to leave in the third after suffering a concussion. Tough night overall for him. Buffalo Bills get the win. They live to see another day. And for our guy, Nick Wright, it's the Pinto Ron treatment okay. come Wednesday. <laughs> which is what they do to diehard Buffalo yeah. Bills fans. Nick, <laughs> in preparation for that, you posted this video oh, Sunday yeah, morning, so stockpiling the ketchup, the mustard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, get ready for Wednesday. I just want to make sure you remember what you did here. Mike Vick joining us now to break it yeah. all down. Mike, we're going to get to that in a second. But let's talk about the game. How did the Bills beat the Ravens without Josh Allen having a huge game? Jenna, you, you just said it. <laughs> we were supposed to get a we were supposed to get a game with two great young quarterbacks. Now, I, I won't take anything away from Josh Allen and what they did. They came out and, and threw the ball 25 straight times. On the, on the flip side, the Baltimore Ravens came out and ran the ball 20 straight times. And, you know, I, I don't know what type of game plan that was or what the philosophy was behind that. But first and foremost, you're going against Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott, two of the best defensive minds in the game. That's just not possible. So it's no way that you can win a game like that. And as many things as I want to say, you know, I got to point out Lamar Jackson and his play. His play was reflective of the offense. I think Lamar came out and did everything that he was asked to do. This is not an indictment on Lamar as far as the loss. The, the, the interception that he threw in the end zone, that was him just pressing and trying. But when you, your offense is that vanilla and run, that run Ooh, that oriented. that was big, though. It's only but so much that you can do. So Lamar was held in the box, and it was unfortunate to see that. You know, I like what the Buffalo Bills did with Josh Allen. They opened the doors. They opened the floodgates, and they let him just throw it around and, and have fun playing backyard football. That's what he do. But for Lamar Jackson, it was all run-oriented, and that's not the way you develop and win games in this league. Yeah, but, but, but Mike, going into this offseason, that organization – or Greg Roman, if they keep him, they decide to keep him, they need to have a, a, a shift in their philosophy and their approach to offense. But also Lamar Jackson. Lamar needs to also do his part. We know who he is as a quarterback. We also know who he is as a runner, how dynamic he is. But he also needs to develop, you know, and go to the next level as a passer as well. There was a few times where, you know, his feet wasn't right and he was just going off of pure ability. So I think if Lamar does his part, the organization do their part, we're going to see a better Baltimore Ravens team next year because they're going to go as far as Lamar take them. But Nick... Nick, 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 Nick. Yeah. Them Buffalo Bills, yeah. I've been trying to tell you for six or seven weeks, buddy. Well, Do you uh -huh. believe yeah. now? Do you believe? It, well, so I'm, I, I want to talk about Lamar, but let me answer that question first. I absolutely believe that, listen, the Bills, as Vic said, put the game entirely in Josh Allen's hands. And he rewarded them with 10 points on offense, and I thought didn't turn the ball over, played pretty well. Um, another, had another one of those fumbles bounce right to an offensive lineman. It's lucky. It's, we'll see how yep. that works next yep. week. They, they said, we're never going to run the football. And we're going to throw, throw, throw all first half. And they went to halftime with three points. But that's fine. We'll see how it works next week. <laughs> the story here is the Ravens. The story here is Lamar. And listen, it's terrible bad luck that Justin Tucker, the greatest kicker I've ever seen. Sorry, Wild. Sorry, right. Vinatieri. Tucker's the best I've ever seen. Yeah, okay. And he's just clanking really? field goals off uprights. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. But because of that, that instead of it being 10-9, it's 10-3, and you're pressing a bit, and Lamar misses a wide-open Hollywood Brown because he's pressured, and on the next play, the game's over. It, the, the, the pick six ended the football game. And I, I think we all really like Lamar as a guy, Vic and Brandon know him personally. Jenna just declared him her favorite athlete. I've been a fan of his since he was at Louisville. But I also think it is important not to condescend to him or patronize to him as if he is someone that needs to be protected. He is a superstar NFL player, the reigning unanimous MVP. And we need to talk about him as such, which is to say, the single most damaging play that was made in the NFL this weekend was this throw right there. It turned what could have been, at worst, a 10-6 game, maybe a 10-10 game, into a 17-3 
blowout because the Ravens offense couldn't get anything going. Now, Wilds, a lot of those Ravens offensive struggles, I do put on the game plan. I do put on the coaches. I do put on what Brandon's been preaching 100%. all year, which is that Greg Roman doesn't, isn't developing him as a passer throughout the year. So it's not all on Lamar, but you obviously can't, it can't absolve him of what was another really rough passing I mean, game in the playoffs. I mean, look at, look at who he's throwing it's the ball something to. He's got to get going. Look, look, Go at look at who Go he's ahead. throwing the ball to. He's throwing the ball to a tight end. Like, it, I honestly, I watched this game and I don't think I've seen a receiver in a formation the entire game. And they was out there. So what I'm saying is the receivers didn't show up in the offense nowhere. And that's that's on Greg Roman. Last week, Hollywood Brown caught seven passes for 109 yards. What was Hollywood Brown? He didn't catch one screen, one pass out the backfield. He didn't catch one pass, one shallow cross, one hook route. He's, he's the second best player on the offense. He didn't even show up. If you can't design plays to get the ball into the hands of the playmakers, then why are you the offensive coordinator? The guy who understands the passing game and knows it came up under that Andy Reid tree is behind Greg Roman. So, Mike, I'm going to show you a graphic that Lamar's had to run the ball the entire amount of his career, that the Ravens have run the ball basically 56% of the time since his first start. Now that he's the MVP and they've had two playoff flameouts, what power or, or leverage does he have to come in and say, like, look, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of running the ball so much and having our offense run the ball so much. It doesn't have a uh, clever hashtag like, you know, let Russ cook. But what are the next steps for Lamar within the organization to turn run. the offense around? I know exactly what Lamar was feeling towards the end of that game. It gets to a point where the rubber meets the road and it's nothing else that you can do. You done did everything you could. Two two years in a row, you ran the football effectively. You ran the offense effectively to the best of your abilities and did everything the coaches have asked you to do. But it's always next level. If, if Lamar had Andy Reid, Lamar wouldn't run the ball half as much as he run the football. And they're using him like a running back. They're looking at his talents, and it's almost what happened to me when I was young. Looking at his talents, we can win with this. This is all we have to do. No, it's next level. You, you have to get everybody involved and the offense has to evolve and that's the only way Lamar's going to evolve as a passer and get better. So right now it's stuck between the rock and the hard spot and there's some tough decisions have to be made for the Baltimore Ravens and the offense and the offensive coordinator and which direction they're going to go in. And no matter what direction they go with the offensive coordinator, here's some free advice. You know what really helped Kyler Murray take a big leap? Trading for DeAndre Hopkins. You know what really helped Josh Allen take a leap? Trading for Stephon Diggs. I don't know what number one receiver, aside from Odell, we think is going to be available this offseason, but adding Dez Bryant ain't going to do it, folks. If you're going to try nope. to diversify this offense, and it's nothing Brandon against Hollywood Brown, but he needs a true number one receiver, and Lamar has to improve on his own volition as well. No, I think you guys covered Lamar well. Uh, but before we go, Jenna, we got to talk about the Bills just a little bit more. There was a big question mark going into a question going into this game. Could this defense stand up? The defense, their the defense biggest was weakness great. was that front seven being able to stop the run. And you're going against a Lamar Jackson-led team that can get it done on, on, on the ground. And what did they do? They stood up, they stood strong, and they stuffed the run for the most part. I mean, they had 150 yards or so on the ground. Uh, but when you li eliminate that team uh, to only being able to do one thing in a game, it makes it hard. Josh Allen didn't play great. But I've been saying it. This is a, the, probably the most complete offense or the most complete team in the playoffs right now. So when Josh Allen isn't playing great, look what happened. Leslie Frazier steps up, his defense yeah. steps up, and they get the job done. So you got to highlight that uh, when you're talking about the Buffalo Bills. And Nick, going into next week, I'm telling you, and I've been telling you for a while, the Buffalo Bills are real, and they're the only team that can compete with them to advance into the Super Bowl. Talking about the Kansas City
Back here talking Bills and Ravens. Hey, we were promised two great young quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, but the story clearly in this game was that Bills defense shut Lamar down all night, couldn't get anything going. Then Lamar forced to leave in the third after suffering a concussion. Tough night overall for him. Buffalo Bills get the win. They live to see another day. And for our guy, Nick Wright, it's the Pinto Ron treatment okay. come Wednesday, which is what they do to diehard Buffalo yeah. Bills fans. Nick, right. in preparation for that, you posted this video oh, Sunday yeah. morning, so stockpiling the ketchup, the mustard. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> get ready for Wednesday. I just want to make sure you remember what you did here. Mike Vick joining us now to break it all down. Mike, we're going to get to that in a second. But let's talk about the game. How did the Bills beat the Ravens without Josh Allen having a huge game? Jenna, you, you just said it. <laughs> we were supposed to get a we were supposed to get a game